What's up you guys and welcome to this week's Manga Sutra Manga Review and in today's video we're going to be covering a psychological seinen slice of life manga called Yomawari Sensei. Now Yomawari Sensei is an amazing manga because it follows a teacher's 12 years of experiences throughout Yokohama during night patrol where he encounters young adults, juveniles, and children in a variety of scenarios whether it is drug abuse, whether it is domestic violence at home, whether it is being a part of gangs, whether it is basically bullying at school, or whether it is self-harm. Yomawari Sensei is an amazing manga because it is raw, it is gritty, it tackles all of these things. And to do this manga justice, we're going to basically follow a different video structure we're not going to try to do one smooth review all the way through. That's very exhaustive. What we're going to try to do is review bits and pieces of the manga and put it all together in this video. So hopefully this video structure is just as cohesive to you and you enjoy it just the same. So let's get into it. The manga starts off with an image of a boy on a swing with the world underneath him. We then see this transition to a young boy talking to a restaurant owner asking if he can have the leftovers instead of them being thrown out. The restaurant owner initially refuses, but when he finds out that the young boy is doing this to feed his sick and ailing mom, who we see coughing in another panel, he agrees to give the kid the leftovers if the young boy can show up at 2 in the morning to get it. Now, we see that the boy is punctual, he gets the leftovers, he comes back home to his mom, who is overjoyed that he's able to get all of this food, and is promising him that when she gets better, she'll take him to the aquarium. And she thanks him. And we find out that the young boy's name is Mizashi. And it breaks my heart to see this. It breaks my heart to see this panel because this is a real scenario. This is what actually happens in certain parts of the world. When I was growing up, and as some of you may not know, I'm adopted. When I was growing up, my adoptive mom was very sick with pneumonia and she was bedridden. She couldn't move for several days. She couldn't do anything. She was too tired. She was too exhausted. It was just literally taking its toll on her. And as a kid, maybe four or five, you know, I was hungry. We were hungry. And we had to rely on assistance from other people. We had to rely on basically other people's tokens of kindness around that time. And it just breaks my heart to see Mizashi doing all of this for his mom because I can relate to this. I can relate to being a kid and seeing your mom just bedridden and sick. And, you know, like his mom saying, when I get better, I'll take you here, I'll take you there. That's what my mom said to me when she was sick. When she gets better, she's going to take me to these places. We're going to get food here. We're going to get ice cream, all of that type of stuff. And it, it just touches me personally to see that happen. We see Mizashi go to a canteen and talk to a woman about receiving milk and bread. And she agrees to give him milk and bread. And we see some kids at the canteen or at the school spying on him. We also see Mizashi go visit his older cousin and bring him back some lighter or other items. And his older cousin basically gives him some change and tells him if he's ever hungry that he can stop by his place. Now, when Mizashi goes back to the canteen, he gets a lot of milk cartons, he gets a lot of bread, and, you know, he's trying to go to the park, but the kids that spied on him, they, they catch him, they basically confront him, and they say, we know that you're not feeding the local dogs, we know that it's for something else, and so they start bashing him, they start beating him, they start stomping on the bread, they start stomping on the milk. And basically, we see Mizashi go back to his older cousin with this mushed and messed up bread and milk. And he's still trying to make French toast. And he goes back home to his mom and he presents her that French toast and he eats it with her. And it just breaks my heart because kids are so mean, man. Kids are literally so mean. Kids are just so brutal. And... There is really no reason to bully him. There's really no reason to bully him. Like, what... I, I don't understand. Like, why bully somebody that is hungry and starving and is trying to take care of their mom? 
it, it just made me want to punch all of those kids, right? But when the older cousin found out that these kids were bullying his little cousin, he basically told them to back off and that his little cousin is with him. We see Mizashi bonding with his older cousin in the next few panels. We see him riding on the back of a motorcycle with him. We see him interacting with his older cousin's friends wearing a new hat. And then we see also Mizashi being introduced to paint thinner through his older cousin. And Mizashi's curious. He's wondering why does his older cousin sniff paint thinner. And his older cousin is telling him that it's like swinging and that he should try it. And we see that Mizashi develops this drug addiction through his own older cousin's drug addiction. And the whole dialogue, the whole, you know, quote throughout these panels is when a kid is serious, so is his drug use. And his fall is all the more violent. And this is another very real and very dark thing because, you know, oftentimes drug addiction is not something that we just discover on our own. You know, people don't just suddenly become addicted to drugs or have substance abuse issues because of some random occurrence. Usually it's through a loved one. Usually it's through a trusted friend. Usually it's through some associate or someone that is in our circle that introduces it to us. We see the dialogue continue. The more wounds a kid carries in his heart, the more he drugs himself to forget the pain. And we see that Masashi eventually joins the gang as well. He's fighting alongside his older cousin. We see that Masashi's mom is better. But we see that Masashi is now sniffing paint thinner. And um, basically, Masashi's just sitting on the corner, smoking, chilling. And we see the Night Watcher, a.k.a. the teacher, you know? Mizashi's telling him to piss off, but the teacher's like, I don't want to. And he sits right down beside Mizashi. And there's like this awkward silence between the two where Mizashi's just irritated by him. But the teacher's just really carefree and happy. You know, eventually Mizashi falls asleep and the teacher drives him all the way back home to his mom. And the mother is just saying he's always such a serious kid. And that's true. Let's just look at what Masashi had to go through. He had to basically grow up raising his mom, taking care of his mom, looking out after his mom. And the only other trusted adult figure who offered him protection and offered him some sense of belonging and some sense of assistance was his older cousin who was in a gang and had drug addiction and introduced him to paint sniffer or to paint sniffing or paint thinner, you know? And he had to grow up really quick. He had to join this gang with his older cousin. He had to fight these battles with his older cousin. He had to basically do all of these things. And he couldn't enjoy his childhood as he could or as he properly should have. And, you know, the night teacher, Yomawari Sensei, he basically leans over. He's tucking in Masashi and he's telling him, you did well to survive for so long. And that if he ever needs any help, that he's there. And we see some tears basically falling down Mizashi's cheek because Mizashi really just needs someone to be there. He needs that love. He needs someone to extend a hand to save him. We see later on that Mizashi pops up at Yomawari Sensei's classroom in the middle of a lecture and he announces that he's no longer going to be doing drugs. Everybody in class is laughing. Yomawari Sensei is kind of shocked and surprised by it. But we see that Masashi is turning his life around. In the next few chapters, we see him working at a restaurant. And that he managed to get that position at that restaurant because Yomawari Sensei put him on. And Yomawari Sensei is respected in the community. He is a good figure. If Yomawari says you're good, then you're good. And people will look out for you. People got your back. Um... We see basically Masashi is trying to be a hard worker. He's trying to be on the straight and narrow. But people from his past, people from the gang and the circles that he used to run with, they're asking him if he wants to go to a party, if he wants to do drugs with him. And Masashi turns them down because he's on the straight and narrow, right? And 
these people from his past, they warn him, you've been sniffing paint thinner, you know? And it was supplied by somebody higher up, you know? And they're not going to let you get away. You're not going to get out of this without either paying for it or getting beaten or killed. And this is making Masashi scared. He, he feels like he has no one else to run to. He has no one else that he can rely on. And Masashi makes a tough choice. He doesn't tell Yomawari Sensei. He doesn't tell Mizutani, a.k.a. the teacher, right? He doesn't tell Mizutani what his situation is. And he ends up stealing money from the restaurant to try to pay back the drug dealer. But we see that he is beaten to a pulp and Mizutani is talking to the restaurant owners and they say it's not really a lot of money that he stole. And we decided that we weren't going to go to the police about it because you recommended him and we don't want him to get in trouble. And we see that Mizutani basically comes to Masashi's rescue. He basically helps him back up. He's saying that, you know, I have called the authorities. It's going to be dealt with. It's going to. Is going to be handled. Don't worry about it, right? And it's really bad because what happens is when Masashi tried to deal with it on his own, like I say, he got beaten to a pulp, but also the drug dealer offered him paint thinner. So what he had to do was sell that paint thinner and some other drugs. And Masashi just ended up taking the drugs himself and he's back on the drugs he's back on it really hard and mizutani he catches mizashi in an alley and he's trying to help him up he's trying to get him up he's trying to tell him i can help you let me help you and mizashi's just like it's too late for me you can't save me and mizashi's just like i belong to the darkness now i keep sinking into this darkness i don't want to be a drug addict i don't want to do drugs i want to be able to go to a park i want to eat i want to have fun i want to live like normal kids i want to live like normal people live and he's just crying he's just crying and he's screaming save me please help me and like I said, this manga gets me because it's very raw. It's very, very gritty. It's very, very dark because it hits to the core of human psyche. People aren't addicted to drugs because they want to be. People don't do the things that they do when they're addicted to drugs because they enjoy it. They do it because their brains are wired different. They do it because they feel like they're trapped in this vicious cycle. And there is no one there to save them. There is no one there to remove them from that cycle. There is no one there to try to rip the cycle apart and prevent it from repeating. And Yomawari Sensei, he's doing his best. Mizutani, he's doing his best. After Mizutani helps Mizashi recollect himself and informs him that the situation with the drug dealer is being sorted, um, Mizashi presents Mizutani with a piece of a newspaper article about a revolutionary rehab facility nearby. And this causes something to break inside of Mizutani. Mizutani is recollecting every single memory of things that he's done for Mizashi. Whether it was basically getting the drug dealer arrested, apologizing to the restaurant owners that hired Mizashi, he basically tells himself that it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to save Mizashi because Mizashi still does not want to get off of drugs. That this rehabilitation hospital place is just a sham. And that Mizashi's not really fully intending to do so. And Mizashi is asking if he can stay the night at Mizutani's place. But Mizutani's cold. He's not talking to Mizashi. He's keeping it to one word responses. He shrugs off um, Mizashi's hand. And Mizashi, he's crying. He's saying, you're abandoning me. You're leaving me behind. And later on, we see Mizashi is high. And he's stumbling in the night near the street and he gets hit by a truck 
And Mizutani feels responsible because he gave up on Masashi. He feels like he let him down. And they're sitting there, Mizutani and Masashi's mother, and they're looking at the cremated ashes of Masashi's body. And there's only a little bone left. And Mizutani tries to pick it up and grab it and put it in the urn, but it just crumbles. And the mother starts crying, and, and Mizutani, he just... He breaks down. He, he just literally has a psychological break and he starts grabbing the ashes and trying to, by hand, and just trying to put them in the urn. And we see towards the end of the chapter that Mizutani is talking with a doctor or he's talking with an elder. And the elder is telling him that you thought you could save Masashi by pouring more and more love into him. Loving him is not going to fix him. Loving him is not going to make the drug addiction go away. It's not going to make his demons go away. And the elder tells Mizutani, we're medical doctors. We know how to fix people. You're a teacher. And he tells Mizutani that, hey, I know you probably want to resign. I know you probably want to quit. But just know if you keep going, if you do this, if you continue to do these night patrols, you continue to be this teacher, you're going to see things that you don't want to see. You're going to see an ugly side of the world, of the city. You're going to see people in rough situations and people in the darkness will bring down other people. And sometimes there's nothing you can do to save them. And Mizutani doesn't really respond and the elder is like yeah i thought you didn't like that i thought you wouldn't want to quit so we see that mizutani after this incident with mizashi he decides fully that he wants to do this he is going to try to save as many people as possible in his own way because he honestly feels guilty because he failed mizashi and I don't think that Mizutani failed Mizashi. I, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. I think that him giving Mizashi the cold shoulder, did that push him to get high and, you know, eventually get struck by a truck or struck by a car? Yeah. But somebody has to want to be saved. You know, at the end of the day, somebody has to want to be saved. As far as Mizutani is concerned and as far as his role in all of it, it's not enough to just love somebody. It's not enough to just give them love and lots of love. That's not going to save them. Giving them the proper resources, putting them in the proper facilities, pointing them to the proper people and resources and just, just pointing them in the right direction in general, is something that is more healthy, something that is actually going to accomplish a lot more. And I feel like in the next few chapters, we see Mizutani, aka Yomawari Sensei, basically learn from this incident with Mizashi. Yomawari Sensei, as a manga, in terms of artwork, is able to capture the ugliness of reality, whether it is our emotions at our lowest points as we see with Mizashi's facial expression when he feels abandoned by Mizutani whether it is childhood bullies and their ugliness when we see Mizashi is basically being picked on or whether it's poverty and sickness that we see Mizashi's mother going through or the nonchalance and the casual tone of Masashi's older brother as he gets Masashi to try paint thinner for the very first time. Yomawari Sensei is able to show us how easy it is to spiral into that darkness and just how easy it is to suck other people into that darkness with us. And also we see the power of emotions in Yomawari Sensei because we see Mizutani really does not want to give up on Mizashi. But also when he does give up on Mizashi, it's not something... When he does give up on Mizashi, it's not something 
that is easy for him. It's like he has this disconnect, this out-of-body experience. His eyes glaze over. He doesn't want to give up on Masashi. He doesn't. But he's realizing that he has did everything he could. He did everything he could for him. He's gotten rid of the people that were problems for Masashi. He got Masashi a job. He took care of and he looked after Masashi. And none of it is enough. And we just see this breaking point. We see this breaking point for him. We see it in his eyes. We see it in his face. We see it in how he dismisses Masashi. We see the regret and the pain in his eyes when Masashi is basically cremated. We see a sense of failure that he's let him down. When he's talking to the elderly doctor at the end of the chapter. We see through the silent panels that Mizutani is not giving up. He's not throwing in the towel. He's not walking away from this. And Yomawati Sensei does a good job at just not tackling this in just this chapter, but in tackling it in every single chapter going forward, right? Um, I would recommend reading it. It is a manga that I think deserves awards because it literally just encapsulates the rawness of reality into artwork um each and every chapter is an amazing story in and of itself and some of the chapters do tie in together if you like this type of stuff if this seems like something you would enjoy and i really recommend reading it even if this is not something you would enjoy this is something that you know it gives you a lot of insight there's a lot of heartwarming stories. There's a lot of heartbreaking stories. Um, Mizutani can't save them all, but some do have happy endings. And I think Yamawari Sensei is a manga that you should definitely give a read. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to show support to the channel, please subscribe. If you want to show extra support, membership is only 99 cents a month. So that helps me keep making this type of content. Uh... <laughs> I'm just going to take a quick second to basically call out all of my members on my channel because if I don't do this now, I'm probably never going to do it. And um, I want to give a shout out to everybody on my channel that is a member. So basically, we're going to be thanking Toxic Pixel, The Deanster, Uchiha Clan, um, Wonka, AR Ran, King Angel 3421 and Toasty. Thank you guys for being members on the channel. I greatly appreciate all of the support and there will be more videos. Bye.